Good Friday morning. Confrontation. Most people I talk with don't like it. I personally don't like it. But in my role as pastor, I'm often required to be part of it. I not only have to confront others, often I'm required to confront myself. Confrontation is both difficult to give and difficult to receive. And few people do either really well. That reality is why I think we so often run from confrontational situations. No matter which side of the confrontation we're on, we don't want to be there. But confrontation, given and received in the right way, it can be a healing balm. It can be a needed correction, and it can help ward off greater pain in the future. What we learn today in Ezekiel is a lesson in having healthy and loving confrontation. Ezekiel, as a watchman prophet, must first hear from God. Only then was he to speak the word of the Lord that God spoke to him. In verse 17, the message Ezekiel is given to his countrymen in Babylon is a warning from God. It's a confrontation. The responsibility of the prophet is to do what God asks him to do. The prophet must speak the truth about the current situation with the goal of restoration to God in God's ways. Sadly, because the Jews were rebellious, the message that God had the prophets speak was almost always negative. Israel, you are rebellious, obstinate, and stubborn. Israel, you are wicked. At this time, the nation was not following God's ways, and thus they had broken the covenant between themselves and God. Their rebellion had been going on for centuries. God eventually had enough of their disobedience and he said, you broke our covenant, and thus you have chosen to void its protection. And he allowed the Babylonians to attack Jerusalem, defeat it, and cart off thousands of Jews, marching them 900 miles back to Babylon. Even that didn't get Israel's attention. God called Ezekiel to be a watchman prophet who would hear God's word and speak it to the people, a message of warning from God. But first, God had a warning for Ezekiel in verses 18 through 21. Here God repeats the same idea several times. Boiling it down, God is telling Ezekiel, if you don't communicate the warning that I give you to the people of God, I'm going to hold you responsible. The Lord goes on to say to Ezekiel, if you don't confront them, the people will perish because of their wickedness, and I'm going to hold you accountable for their blood. There's a principle here about what it looks like to love and care for someone in a sacrificial way. It reminds me of Ephesians 4.15, which says, Speak the truth of God in love. We have the responsibility to love the people in our lives, to watch out for them, and to always speak the truth to them. And while speaking the truth in love is clearly biblical and the right thing to do, there are times we would rather not get involved in holding someone accountable or confronting them, especially when the relationship is a close one. We notice a family member, a friend, or a coworker doing something wrong. We see them headed in the wrong direction for trouble. All the warning signs are there, and we know deep down inside we should say something to them. If we truly love them, we will speak up. But all too often we drag our feet. We get scared and we rationalize. Well, what they're doing isn't that bad. They'll figure it out on their own, won't they? So we say nothing. Why do we keep silent? Why do we feel this emotional pressure? Why do we rationalize our behavior or theirs? Even if we pray for them, which is always a good thing, God ultimately expects us to talk to them. Our fears tell us that if we confront them, they're going to get offended, or it'll be awkward, or they'll get angry. So we, we don't talk to them. We fail in our God-given role as watchmen in our responsibility to love others. I've lost count of the number of people who've come to me with concerns about someone else in the church. I'm the pastor, and maybe they think it's my job to confront on their behalf. I am not a professional watchman, by the way. 
But yes, as the pastor, I have a responsibility to shepherd the flock. And that can mean functioning in the role of a watchman prophet and confronting people. But my greatest responsibility is to build up the church family to do the work of the ministry. It's my job to help the rest of the church to grow into a family of watchmen. Like I said, over the years, there have been more times than I can count that I've been asked to confront other people on behalf of someone else because I'm the pastor, and I, I do it. More recently, I've instead coached people on how to confront on their own. That's where the principle Jesus taught in Matthew 18 comes in. If a person has sinned, go and talk to that person. And if that doesn't work, take someone with you. And if that doesn't work, all right, talk to me. As I look over the past 17 years that I've pastored here at First Assembly, holy confrontations in an area where we still have room to grow. Spiritual truth telling doesn't come easy. Ezekiel was called to be the watchman prophet that must speak the truth of God to the people. It's a difficult task because it often includes confrontation. So, apply this to yourself. Do you need to improve at sacrificially loving others, even if it means having difficult conversations and speaking the truth in love? I know I do, and I'm going to work on it. Dear God, thank you for your word and this message in Ezekiel. Thank you for speaking to us through your word and for giving us insight and wisdom through it. I pray that you'd give me the strength and the courage to be a faithful watchman and truth teller, just as you've instructed Ezekiel to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.